Get down here. There's still a few more folks, amen. Just have patience, amen. Psalm 103. Amen. Let's, let's change direction. Psalm 103. Psalms 103. Let's come on, Lord. Let's change directions. There's somebody to go along with your praise. Singing and praising them. I'll hold you for a little while. But let me share this word quick today. As it relates to what's going to keep you. Somebody might be here. Not knowing why they folks is shouting. So I can help a few folks. To understand why your neighbor is crying. Why your neighbor is shouting. Why your neighbor has their hands in the air. If you don't mind, let's, let's help one or two people today. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to help you. In our response to why God is able. So, let me give you a couple verses. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all thy benefits unto me. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy desires, diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied my mouth with good things, so that a youth is renewed like the eagle's wings. You may be seated. Amen. Let me just give it to you quick. On this morning because since we're in the spirit of praise. Let me just remind somebody why we ought to give him praise. And who ought to give him praise. And where we ought to give him praise. The text says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Man, don't go too far, Brother Will, because I ain't staying here long. Because we came to give him praise, and the psalmist of David knew something about giving God praise. David had some faults, failures, and issues, but yet David said, I'm going to give him praise. And David said, despite my circumstances, despite what's going on in my life, I'm going to give him some praise. Pleasant Green, this morning, I just believe despite what life is dealing you, what life has thrown your way, you still came to give him some praise. Despite the family member that has went on to be with the Lord, despite that family member that's sitting in the hospital room, despite the bills that are currently due, despite how your health is spilling today, God is still worthy to be praised. The text says, who ought to give him praise? You ought to give him some praise. I ought to give him some praise. Despite tears and heavy hearts, the text says we ought to give him some praise. The Bible says, bless the Lord. And if you can bless, you got to know the Lord to be able to bless the Lord. He's the King of Kings. He's the uh, Lord of hosts. He's the strong and mighty. He's our strength. He's our redeemer. He's the Lord. He's the owner and the master. If anybody ought to give him the praise, you ought to be able to give the praise for who he is. I love it because the Bible says, bless the Lord. That means we ought to lift up the Lord. That means we ought to talk about Him. We ought to give Him thanks and raise holy hands and say, you know what? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That means it means you ought to give Him some praise, but I love it because it's not any old kind of praise. It's that praise that comes from the inside. It's the praise that comes deep down within. When you start to think about the goodness of God, I'm talking about deep down on the inside, you ought to be able to give him some praise. I didn't come to bother nobody, but I believe the spirit is moving, and we ain't poking or prodding. We just got to think about the goodness of God. The text says, oh my soul. That means everything on the inside. Every now and then, I don't know about you, but I'm like David. Every now and then, I got to muster up some praise. Every now and then, I got to give him praise all by myself. Now, I'm looking at some folks that came to give God 
awesome praise. I don't know about you, but he's worthy of our praise. It comes from within. It's this joy that I have, this joy that you have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world ain't going to take it away. So I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what the enemy is doing to you. Don't worry, you still can have joy. Anybody got joy this morning? Come on, Brother Monte, don't fool me right now. You got your joy this morning? Despite what you're going through, you still can have joy. I don't care who's in the White House or the Black House. I still can have joy. Despite what my doctor or lawyer said, I still can have joy. No matter if you talk about me or not, I still can have joy. Whether I got all oh, y'all looking at me crazy. Whether you got money in your pocket or not, you still can have joy. Anybody got joy this morning? says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. I love it because, bless the great, I'm about to lose my mind because I see some folks in here have lost their mind giving God some praise. Come on, y'all look at me. I heard the choir singing like crazy. Singing like this was their last time they was going to sing on this side of heaven. I heard the musician playing like it was his last time. I heard the deacons praying like it was their last time. I love it because they came to bless his name. Didn't come for any other reason, just to bless his name. And I love it because somebody's still sitting on your road. Ain't shouting all day long. But I love it because the text says we ought to bless his name with everything that we got. But maybe, maybe, maybe somebody just needs some facts on why we ought to bless his name. It seems like this world is full with lies and alternative facts. But I got good news for the church today. That we don't got to make nothing up, Brother Melvin. We don't got to uh, try to pretend like it's something we don't know. If you are a child of God, you got some facts and some reasons why you came to pray this morning. Come on, I'm going to take a survey. Does anybody got some burdens too heavy to carry? Come on, let me see. Anybody? Anybody got some weight on this show? Come on, stand on your feet real quick. Anybody got some weight? That's too heavy to carry. But yet you came to give God some praise. And anybody got some problems in their home? But yet you came to give him some praise. I got some facts for those that didn't stand because the text says, here's some reasons why we ought to give him praise. It said that forget not his benefits to you and me. I'm done. I'm done right here. The text says, here's some benefits. Do I got some sinners in the building? Do I got some folks? for today. Has anybody sinned this morning? Uh, Y'all know what the people still say. Let me tell you. My Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Bible said we ain't nothing but filthy rags in the sight of God. So are there any sinners saved by grace in the building? That's a benefit that he looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. David sinned against God. David looked at some things he should y'all look at. He looked at some things he shouldn't have looked at. He touched somebody's wife he shouldn't have touched. Lord have mercy. I'm glad that God forgives me when I look at some stuff I'm not supposed to look at. Come on, I'm not all alone. Don't leave me on the island by myself. Some of us have touched some things just last night we shouldn't have touched. But thanks be to God. He woke you up this morning. That's a reason to shout. The fact that he forgives me of my sins, that's a reason to shout. I love it because not only that, but yet he heals my diseases. I'm looking at some sick folks in the building. I'm looking at some folks that have been through a storm, even in their health situation. I'm looking at he's a healer and a deliverer. But yet, let me tell you about another disease. I keep going backwards. There's a disease that some of us inherited from Adam. Come on, y'all. You think you got together, but yet he heals us of all our disease. That's another reason to shout. But I love it because 4 says he redeemeth thy life from destruction. Has anybody been on the road to destruction? Y'all look at y'all. Y'all gonna make me jump. Has anybody been heading in that direction? No, the Lord wasn't sending you in that direction. Anybody been on their way to hell and about to get in some trouble and destruction was up ahead, but yet the Lord 
turned your life around. Yeah, yeah. I love it because he protects me from myself. Text 4 says he crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I'm getting excited because that's some more benefits for me. And I didn't do anything to get the benefits. The benefits came on an old rugged cross. When they put our Savior up between two thieves and nailed him and speared him and crowned him and then between them took him down between the sixth and the ninth hour, he gave up the ghost for you and me. Bible says he's coming back one day. Don't know the next day, nor the hour, but I know he's coming, brother Mark. I know he's coming back for me, and he's coming back for you. The text gives us some reasons why we ought to bless him from our souls. Not only because he, he forgives us, but, but, but he loves us. I love it because it's, he loves us, not that old funny kind of love. Uh, I see some more shouters. Anybody got anybody in life that, that, that they, they show you funny kind of love? Come on, let me look at some ladies. Y'all got some men in your life that show you that funny kind of love? They only love you because they want something from you. But not, but not Jesus. I love it. His loving and tender mercies. What that means is he loves me despite myself. He loves me when I'm right, when I'm wrong. Y'all look at me crazy. His loving kindness. And, 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 and I love it. Thank you, preacher. I love it because I didn't earn his love. The Bible says, for God so loved. Thank God he loves you and me. I love it because it, it blessed me because the Psalm of David said, because he shows his loving kindness. But, but yet I love it because David was a recipient of God's mercy. Y'all can make it do it. I'm looking at some folks that are recipients of God's mercy. I'm looking at some recipients that are recipients of God's mercy. David did something he shouldn't have done. Yet God had mercy on him. But I want to try it one more time. I, I, I need to see four more hands of folks that are here today that are recipients of God's mercy. I love it because all mercy is, is God holding back what we deserve. And thank God uh, that he has his mercy on us. The text says, thank God for his mercy. But yet, last but least, he satisfies you with some good things. In the midst of all David had went through and David had been through, God still gave him some desires of his own heart. Pleasant green, God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. But I've got good news for you that the God that you serve, the God that you talk about, and the God that you lift up, and the God that you exalt, he still gives you some good things. Despite when we walk in our own willful way, he still got some good things for us. Despite when we don't read like we should read and pray like we should pray, God still has to oh, y'all make me God still has some good things for you and me. I'm excited because if God, God doesn't treat you and me sometimes like we treat other folks. I'm glad that God treats us differently than what other folks do. Because y'all y'all got folks in your life when you do them wrong, they don't they don't give you what you ask for. Oh, y'all going to make a jump in the pit. Y'all know some folks that that uh that you know they ought to be good to you but they're not good to you. And and because you've done something wrong that they withdrew their love and withdrew whatever they had for you. Not God. Y'all can make me do it. Can I back up to this last night? Sister Meeks and we go home. Let me back up. We go home. I'm glad that he doesn't hold back good things. When I lay down last night, between life and death, can I tell you some good things happened last night? When you and I was laying down, can I tell you about three different things? Deaf angel passed by. Thieves Pass by. Yeah. Robbers pass by. Yeah. The fire truck passed by. Yeah. Hey, that ain't good. Hey, when you woke up this morning, new mercies was waiting on you. Grace was waiting on you. Love was waiting on you. 
David knew something about God in the midst of celebration. God was everything to David. No matter what David went through, what he faced, when you read the text for yourself, David said, despite all that, I'm going to bless the Lord with everything that I have. Because he had a relationship with God. And David said, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to exalt him. I'm going to lift him up. One thing about David, Deacon Nelson, David, David did not categorize his praises. Um, you know, sometimes, in, you know, little praise, we don't get excited about little stuff God does no more. Sometimes we got to get excited about the big stuff. But not David. David just said, look, when I think about the goodness of God, all that includes my soul cries, hallelujah. And what that means is to the believer today in the text, that don't wait to shout. Don't wait to give him praise. God's blessing you right now. You may not even know it. The fact that you're looking at me and not viewing me. And I'm looking at you and not viewing you. It's pleasant great. Let me encourage you. Shout for everything that God has done. Don't, don't get a big shout, little shout. If he's done anything for you, it's because he loves you. And for those that are here today, and you're wondering why all the shouting, it's because David and the person next to you has a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's because there was a time in their life they were not living the right way. They were doing everything. They were dirty inside and out. They were liars, cheaters, addicts. Didn't deserve to live. But yet, they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They heard about how that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. They understood that thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. 